So Samsung just released new phones, new watches, a bunch of buds, and even a ring, and I got hands on with all of it, so let me show you everything new. So starting off with the Flip 6, the biggest difference you'll notice is it's got a slightly improved design with these nice ring accents that wrap around the camera and it's also been flattened out a lot, which personally I really like. It feels so much better and also just nicer to hold in the hand. I mean, the sharper edges definitely remind me of the S24 Ultra and just make it feel more premium. When you open it up, you'll also notice the main screen has had a bit of an upgrade, starting with that crease, which is definitely more ironed out and probably the best they've ever had it. It's also really bright now because it can go up to 2,600 nits, which I think does make it one of the brightest foldables in the world. So in terms of design, it's good to see Samsung gave it a more refined premium look, but under the hood, it's got some slick new features. Of course, they're new AI features and they're exclusive to the Flip and Fold 6 for now. And one of them is in the AI editor. It's called Portrait Studio, which basically works with your selfies. And how it works is you can choose from four different art styles. So it's comic, 3D, and there's two others. One once you click generate, it'll then scan your face and actually create a few different portraits of you in that style you picked. I was expecting it to stylize the main picture, but instead it kind of generated a version of me. But I mean, it did do a pretty good job at replicating my facial features. And the cool thing is you can do this with any portrait picture. So if you want to do it with your friends or family, it could make for some cool profile pictures or even stickers. Then there's this new sketch to image feature in the side panel, which I'm not going to lie, is actually really cool. So you can just draw something like this beautiful cat's eye true. Okay, that's bad. I mean, it's actually kind of a joke just how bad my drawing is. But as soon as you click generate, check this out, the AI will take your drawing and actually generate an artwork that looks decent. And it also gives you a few different options to choose from. But I think what surprised me the most was it knew my doodle was a cat without me having to prompt it. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's a bunch of things this can be used for, but I don't know. You guys tell me what you'd use this for. What I did find really useful though is the Flip 6 now comes with this new Compose option, which essentially helps you write anything. So you can choose what it is you want to write and then also the type of tone you'd like it in, whether that's professional, casual or polite. Then again, you just click generate and depending on the styles you chose, the Flip 6 will add emojis, make it short or long and this is pretty nice to have. They also added the interpreter feature to the Flip 6, but in the best way I've ever seen, because it actually works with the main cover screen now. So whenever you say something, it can be translated onto the cover screen so that the other person can see what you're saying. I mean, this is really cool. The cover screen also got a fun new update with something called live interactive wallpapers, which basically react based on how you move your phone, or you can even just flick them around with your finger. You get a few of these wallpapers to play around with, and I'm sure they'll be adding more over time, but a fun quirky feature. And speaking of the cover screen, its camera's got a huge upgrade. The Flip 6 now comes with a massive 50 megapixel main camera, which is a huge upgrade from the old 12 megapixel cam on the Flip 5. And I think a lot of people are going to be really happy with that, especially because the Flip is just such a great phone for taking selfies or group shots. So I'm really happy to see they did that. And when it comes to colors, there's four different options to pick from. And I like that they're not so muted or pastel. They're pretty bright. Something else that's really cool is Samsung have these LED covers that light up every time you get a notification or phone call. I mean, that's pretty unique. As for the battery, it got an 8% increase, so we'll probably get a few extra minutes, maybe even hours. But now onto the Fold 6. Okay, so this is the Fold 6. And honestly, I was kind of shocked by just how good the squared off design looks and feels. I mean, the camera design even looks better and more premium, especially with those new accents around it. It's also a lot lighter and it's actually almost as heavy as the S24 Ultra. So I mean, it feels good to hold. So it is quite different to the old design and actually a lot more like the S24 Ultra's design, which I prefer. It does still have that annoying wobble thanks to the cameras. So if you want to use this phone flat, forget about it. <laughs> the cover screen, however, you can immediately tell just how much better the screen size is. It is actually slightly larger and just more proportional. And when you open it up, unlike the Flip 6, the Fold 6 crease is still definitely noticeable. The screen is better though, because it's slightly wider and shorter, which I much prefer. It's almost exactly like a square size and it goes up to 2600 nits brightness. So I definitely think this is the best fold design and size they've ever made. As for the features, they're basically the same as the Flip 6, but they're actually better integrated on the fold because of the S Pen. 
So like the new sketch to image feature will be a lot better because of all that screen space and of course the S Pen. I do wonder how many people with Fold devices will actually end up using this sketch to image, but either way it does do a great job at taking a terrible drawing and turning it into something you can actually use. Like maybe some album artwork for a Spotify playlist? I don't know, but you can also use the S Pen for AI now. So this is a pretty unique feature I haven't seen before inside the AI editor as well, and it's this sketch to image option. So essentially with this feature, you can take the S Pen and actually draw something on your picture, like a sun for example, and using the Folds AI, it'll detect that drawing and incorporate it into your photo, kind of like an embroidery patch or print on my shirt. So it actually recognizes the material, but I did test it drawing on myself just to see how good it was, but quite often it wouldn't get it right or it just kept on coming up with this message that it couldn't generate due to the location of my drawing. So as cool as this feature is, it definitely felt a bit hit or miss, but I will need to do a bit more testing on it first. All in all, I do wish they had have made a couple more upgrades like the battery and maybe the camera, but the flatter design on both the flip and fold are really working for them and all the new AI features are just super exciting. But those are just the phones. There's a new watch in town. So say hello to the new Watch 7 and the brand new Galaxy Watch Ultra. As you guys can see, there's a pretty big difference between the two. The Watch 7 is super similar to the Watch 6 and even the Watch 5, so barely any updates there, but the Ultra on the other hand is something completely new. So I really want to focus on this bad boy. At first glance, I'm pretty sure we're all thinking the exact same thing, and that is it looks very similar to another Ultra watch we all know of. Like, it cannot just be me. The orange accent color, the boxier design. I mean, there is kind of a good reason why it actually looks so similar, and that's because orange is actually one of the most visible colors. So it makes it perfect for outdoor activities and safety, which this watch is especially made for. It's also made out of titanium, making it super tough, although it did feel a little cheaper to me. So whether it's tougher or not than the competition, we'll have to see. It does also come with a brand new action button too, which can be customized in the settings to start an exercise, a stopwatch, turn on the flashlight, or even water lock, which I mean I do really like, but again it kind of feels like deja vu. It also has a brand new watch face specifically made just for the Ultra, again pretty cool, but it also comes with a night mode that turns the watch face red at night and is good for your eyes, but we all know that this is another familiar feature we've seen before. I mean at this point you guys can see how silly it is at just how similar this watch is to the larger competitor. That being said though, it is definitely more ultra than the Galaxy Watch 7, especially with the new adjustable multi-sport mode, where you can add and adjust the distance for each sport and up to three different sports. You also get all the sweet features that the Galaxy 7 comes with, like all the pinch gestures, which can be really handy to have. <laughs> What is interesting though is you'll no longer get the Watch Classic or the Watch Pro, those will both be replaced by the Ultra. Interesting. What I do really like about the Ultra, as you can see, it comes in three different frame colors, it's water resistant up to 100 meters, it has 3000 nits brightness, a new chip, triple LED sensors, and for the price, in comparison to the Apple Watch Ultra, it is cheaper. So I am definitely going to be testing the new Watch Ultra, but I'm also going to be testing the new Ring. Now this was quickly teased when the S24 Ultra came out, but it is finally here and it's the new Galaxy Ring. And I gotta tell you guys, I'm actually really excited about this. So it comes in this glossy see-through case and believe it or not, the ring is actually made from titanium, so it's pretty high grade stuff. It wirelessly charges in the case and lasts for around 7 days before you have to charge it again. I mean, that's awesome, and the case you can also use with USB-C or wirelessly charge it. So if you ever needed to, you could just charge it using your phone's wireless power share. But of course what's special about this ring is the actual tech inside of it because this bad boy has sensors for everything. It can track your sleep, your heart rate, temperature and even some exercises. And what I especially love is they didn't add a subscription to it like you kind of see with other health rings. 
But what's really cool is it'll also come with gestures. So you can just pinch to turn off an alarm or you can pinch to snap a pic with your phone's camera. And it also comes with a find my ring feature. So if you ever lose it, you can actually track it back, which I also believe is the only health ring in the world that currently has this feature. There's also this small ridge on it to show which direction to wear the ring for the sensors to work best. And what I also really like is just how thin it is. I mean, you get used to wearing it really quickly. I just had it on for a few minutes and forgot I even literally had it on. In total, it comes in nine different sizes. And interestingly, the bigger sizes actually have slightly longer battery life because they're bigger and it comes in three different colors. So gold, black, and silver. Pretty much an option for everyone. Another thing that's really interesting is Samsung said if you pair the ring with any Galaxy watch, not only does it save the ring's battery life, but you can get combined tracking data. So theoretically, you'll get more accurate results, but I'll definitely need to test this. So I mean, you guys know me, I love my rings. Subscribe by the way, but I also love my music. So this was a pretty huge surprise. The new Galaxy Buds 3 Pro have been completely redesigned. From the entire case design to the actual earbuds, they have a completely new look. And it feels a bit familiar, again, except for this clear lid, which if I open up, you'll notice these new LEDs on the actual earbud. And when you take them out, you'll also notice this new stem, I mean, blade, that also comes colored so you can tell the difference between the left or right one. I mean, that is nifty. But this new design doesn't exactly feel like Samsung's innovating. The old design was just unique to Samsung and this new design with blades is a bit too similar to the AirPods Pro. The quality and look of these new buds also just felt a bit less premium to me and even the cases made from plastic that just felt cheap even though these are not cheap. What I do like is it does come with two different colors and the chrome actually looked really nice, kind of futuristic almost. And going back to the blades, they do have quite a couple of features when it comes to these LED lights. For example, they'll actually flash if you use the Find My feature, and they can also indicate the battery percentage. As for the sound quality, this is something I definitely need to test out more. And they do also come with regular pro features like the active noise cancellation, intelligent sound, and even a new AI interpreter that can translate languages for you in real time. So there are definitely some cool differences between these and the competition. They can also wirelessly charge as well through the wireless power share on the go which is neat and have around six hours continuous playtime. Overall this was not the Galaxy Buds upgrade I expected and hopefully all the features and sound quality can make up for it. But the Fold, the Flip, the Watch Ultra and even the Ring are super exciting so make sure you sub to see some more content on those and I'll see you guys in the next one. Toodles!